Welcome to southwestern Utah and the Diamond Valley Volcano right here near Snow Canyon State Park looking to the west at some of the colorful uh, beige colored sandstones the Navajo sandstone a Jurassic unit uh, right across Highway 18 and then panning around here to another volcano the Santa Clara volcano which sits just to the north and then finally out to the Pine Valley Mountains uh, to the north as well. Thanks for joining me today. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. We're going to do a little uh, exploration today of this volcano, learn a little bit about this type of volcano, head to the top, look into the crater, and then I've got some drone video as well where we can look at the volcano and its lava flows from the air. So this should be pretty spectacular. Um, cinder cones are maybe the most, if you had to watch a volcano erupt, and you were looking for pure aesthetics uh, and pleasure, just a really cool experience, kind of like fireworks, a cinder cone might be just the ticket. Um, cinder cones are volcanoes that when they're erupting, you can approach reasonably close. They're throwing out clots of lava, small pieces of lava, but they don't produce a lot of ash. They're generally not that explosive and dangerous. Um, at night it's all that incandescent material so it's a really attractive volcano to watch erupt and unlike um, shield volcanoes that mainly produce lava cinder cones produce lava that is charged with gases and so that gas is thrown out of the vent into the air piles up around the vent to form the actual cone itself <clears throat> this is a nice cinder cone because it's Kind of a classic one it's the classic shape kind of symmetrical cone shaped it's a, a typical height we see with cinder cones maybe uh this one's probably oh i don't know maybe a little over uh 100 meters 300 or so feet tall um it has a crater at the top that the where the material was thrown out of the vent um, and then usually what we see with cinder cones, and this one is no exception, is when the gas-rich material has erupted, typically you get uh, a lava flow that comes out the base of the volcano and then pours across the landscape. And that's all this dark rock you can see here. Uh, this volcano, along with the Santa Clara volcano out here to the north, erupted at about the same time and sent their lavas down into snow canyon proper right down the valley and all the way down to the town of ivan's uh several miles away so let's go ahead and head up this thing um i'll be sure and add some more segments here if there's anything cool and noteworthy to check out otherwise join me at the top all right so we're about halfway up to the summit i would guess uh the trail circles around to the east and then to the north side of the volcano and this is a good spot just in this section of trail to look at some of the eruptive material from this cinder cone the cinders themselves um, you can see just along the trail here you know the nature of these particles that have been erupted from the volcano they're black of course they're a rock type known as basalt uh, they have a lot of holes in them. A lot of these gas bubbles, what we call vesicles, um, are from the gases that were trapped in the lava as it was being ejected. And so there was enough gas in this lava as it erupted that it propelled this stuff up into the air. So rather than lava flowing across the landscape, um, the main product of this eruption were these gas-charged pieces of lava that flew up into the sky, landed on the ground, and ultimately piled up to form the cone shape or the vent there around the volcano. Sometimes you see some really neat shapes in, in these pieces of cinder. Um, you just get kind of interesting looking shapes. You can see sometimes flow lines in the rocks themselves, kind of like this piece here. Let's see if we can see. Oh, hold up this one. The fact that I can pick this up with one hand uh, relatively easily shows you just how much gas and pore space makes up these rocks but you can see some nice little flow lines here in these pieces of lava um, of course if they're bigger than oh i guess about a softball or so and they're propelled into the air they're above what we call a cinder in terms of size and they're what are what's known as volcanic bombs here the nice little switchback on the trail we can actually see 
little outcrop of the native rock that the eruption took place in. So you can see a nice outcrop here, this beige sandstone. This is the Jurassic Age Navajo sandstone. So this eruption came up through fractures or maybe faults. They cut this unit and that formed the volcano we see here at the surface. So classic sort of medium grained quartz rich sandstone. This is the same unit that makes up the rocks we see at Zion National Park and down in Snow Canyon. The lower part of the Navajo sandstone tends to be much more red and the upper part is typically this lighter color, uh, almost white unit. So it looks like we're getting a little bit closer to the top. Um, so let's head up the trail a little bit further and see what geologic wonders await us. All right, a little bit further up the trail. And even though these cinder cones primarily erupt small clots of lava, cinders, they rain down around the vent and they're loose, per, you know, per, um, constructing a cone that's somewhat you know, not very structurally stable. You can get, at times, these bigger clots of lava rain down and are hot enough and sticky enough. Other clots of lava stick to them and form larger masses of rock like we see here. And this is what we call a glutinate. So this is lava spatter, if you will, just big clots of lava that have rained down uh, after being ejected from the vent, have accumulated and piled up upon themselves to, pr to produce a, a larger mass of rock that's somewhat kind of helter-skelter looking, but you can see some crude layering in here. You can see these large masses of lava that have kind of stuck one to another. And that's what forms these bigger outcrops here. So this isn't lava that was flowing down the face of the volcano. This was still big blobs of lava that were um, flying out of the vent, airborne, and land on the ground to form uh, this material here. Again, agglutinate. So there's a fun little word to add to your, your lexicon. We're getting a pretty nice view as we work our way up the trail. Let's head out to this point and see what we've got so far. And then of course, we'll, we'll do a nice little segment here at the true summit. Um, but from this point here, you can see the highway down below. You can see the slope of this volcano. Usually these cinders accumulate because they're loose uh, at the angle of repose for cinders, which is maybe something like 30 to 35 degrees. So you can see that angle there forming the, the flank of the volcano. You can see the summit up there, so we're getting pretty close, uh, not much further. And then I'll just slowly pan around because it's just... It's just so gorgeous here. I'll let you kind of take this in. The beige sandstones of the Navajo sandstone. And then as we wheel around a little bit further towards the Southwest, you'll see they are much more red. The mountains in the distance are the Beaver Dam Mountains. That is the Basin and Range province out there. So from there, westward, all the way to Wow, essentially almost the San Andreas Fault. It's an area of crustal extension, uh, the crust being extended in an east-west direction. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the top. Uh, you might have asked like why these volcanoes are here, uh, and that's a good question. So we'll, we'll get that when we get to the top. So let's head up to the top. All right, we made it team, good job. Steep hike, but not too long, fairly short, and just fantastic view of the summit crater of the Diamond Valley cinder cone right up here. Just beautiful. A little bit down in the shadow, so a little bit difficult to see. Probably, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe 100 feet deep, 30 meters, something in that realm. Uh, looking off to the north of the other big cinder cone in this region, the Santa Clara cone. You can see the lavas that came out of that. Uh, it's not as tall of a cinder cone, but I believe it did produce more lava. So the age of these two things, it's been tricky. Um, the first age I found for these volcanoes was, ten, was bracketed at 10 to 20,000 years. Um, no, maybe it was 20 to 30. Shoot, now I can't remember. But they've since actually found some charcoal at the base of one of these flows. 
and dated it and it'd be nice to get another one and verify that but right now the preliminary age on this eruptive event which is es essentially both of these volcanoes going off more or less at the same time is around 27,000 years ago so that's the time frame we're looking at uh, obviously in this dry arid climate things don't weather very quickly and so these volcanoes and their eruptive products look quite young quite fresh on this landscape but that produced a lot more lava and of course as we talked about that lava went down on the other side of the rim of the volcano over here down snow canyon and uh, several miles maybe like six to eight kilometers to the south through snow canyon to the town of ivans um, so really wonderful uh, crater area up here you can also see how much redder the uh, cinders are up here at the summit so they're just much more oxidized hopefully the camera's picking that up i've got kind of a low sun angle here but definitely a noticeable change in color to me uh, the red color so i talked about why we might get volcanoes in this part of so southwestern utah why are there volcanoes here and th these aren't the only two there's uh, more to the north there's some more to the east towards the town of hurricane um, but let's just talk about these real quick we're we're at a very interesting crossroads geologically at this location this is essentially the um, boundary between the Colorado Plateau region, which is out here to the east, the, a stack of mostly horizontal sedimentary rocks. You know the national parks as well as I do, Arches, Capitol Reef, Bryce Canyon, Zion, all that area of northern Arizona and southern Utah is part of the Colorado Plateau. Stable rocks, not a lot of folding or faulting, uh, just a huge stack of rocks of which the Grand Canyon is also part of it as well. But then as we move out here to the west, we enter a totally different province, the Basin and Range province of the Western United States, where the rocks are being stretched east to west. And we have lots of faults that have produced alternating mountains and valleys across Nevada, uh, across parts of Western Utah, and even into Eastern California. So this is the boundary right here. So you can imagine as, when I'm looking to the north here, as the Basin and Range province to your left or to the west is extending and stretching and moving that way, that creates faults. So we, we stretch the Earth's crust. The Earth's crust is brittle near the upper part, so it cracks and it creates faults. Um, the crust gets thinner as that stretching occurs, and that allows magma to be generated and then also move towards the surface and feed these volcanoes. So you do see some crude alignment of these volcanoes in places here. It, you know, I've got two here, so two points make a line. There you go. Um, but there is some crude alignment of these volcanoes in an overall north-south direction. So that explains a little bit about why we see the volcanoes um, in this part of southwestern Utah and presumably, you know, this area is still Geologically active we would expect with these young volcanoes here and Basin and range extension continuing We would expect that this process might go on for some time uh, In the future so future eruptions in this area are not just likely but to be expected Probably not within any one of our given lifetimes, but looking forward into the next few thousands or tens of thousands of years. What's interesting about this summit crater, and I noticed it uh, when I was looking at it on Google Earth, is it's definitely higher back up here to the south or southwest, and then it slopes down. So the whole thing is sort of open to the northeast. When I look over there at the Santa Clara one, at least from this distance, it looks like it's pretty flat along the top. It doesn't seem to have the same asymmetry, even though I can't quite see the far side of it. And one explanation for this, and you see this with cinder cones on occasion, you might see one side of the cinder cone is larger and more cinders are piled up on one side versus another. And there's sometimes a preferential uh, direction that the cinders piled up. Uh, even in like Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho, there are cones, and this exists in other places as well. There are cones where the pile of cinders sit out in one area and the vent is not even built up. And what that indicates is the wind. The wind can play a big role in determining the shape and the distribution of the cinders 
when these volcanoes erupt. So with so much more material piled up on the south end than the north end, uh, it would lead to a pretty reasonable hypothesis that perhaps we had winds coming from north to south. And so when the cinders were ejected out of the vent, a lot of them drifted over here to the north side of the crater, or excuse me, the south side of the crater, and accumulated on that side. And that's why you have a little bit higher um, side there. Just a hypothesis, but uh, you do see that kind of pattern or distribution with some of these cinder cones. Up here near the top, we have a little ridge of material. And you've seen this before. We saw this further down the trail. So let's see if you can remember the fancy word. We've got just clots and blobs of lava stacked on each other. They were still hot enough when they landed that they, they, they glued together. So there's cohesion. Uh, this is a glutinate. So it's still basalt. That's still the rock type. Um, but this particular pattern, which indicates the process by which the rock came to be, is what we might call uh, a glutinate. You get some nice views here of some of the, the vesicles, the gas bubbles in there, some really nice vibrant lichen. That's that bright green uh, material growing on the outside there. So pretty amazing. Um, so we'll probably go ahead and sign off with that, but hopefully you've enjoyed this little journey up maybe one of the most accessible. It's right next to a major highway um, and scenic cinder cones around. I mean, I don't know if you can, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find another cinder cone in that's as accessible in as picturesque a setting with this beautiful Navajo sandstone. You got a major state park back here to the west. Uh, the lofty Pine Valley Mountains off here to the northeast. So thanks for joining me on this little adventure here out to the Diamond Valley Cinder Cone or the Diamond Valley Volcano in southwestern Utah. Make sure you like, share, subscribe the video. That's always helpful to helping me promote geologic education, sharing my passion with the earth, with others. So anything you can do there is helpful. There's donate buttons at the bottom right corner of the viewer and under the video description if you'd like to donate as well. But we'll go ahead and sign off here from the crater of this volcano here, Diamond Valley Cinder Cone in Southwestern Utah.